everyone. Thank you for joining me for this second chakra tune-up. So the second chakra is known as the Svadhisthana chakra, and it's also called the sacral chakra. It's located about four fingers below the navel in the center of the spine, and um, the color associated with it is orange. So if you start to inhale, into that part of the body, visualize an orange sphere of light glowing brighter with every breath. I encourage you to keep up that visualization throughout our practice. Um, the sacral chakra controls your reproductive organs and sexuality. So when it's in a healthy balance, you have a healthy sexuality and creative flow. When it's out of balance, you might have issues with intimacy or attachment. Also things like addiction and codependency can come into play, um, as well as reproductive problems and infertility, things like that. Um, so let's go ahead and do our quick tune-up. We're just gonna do a few poses that help to activate the second chakra. So I'm gonna move this out of the way for the moment. If you do have a blanket handy, you might want to uh, go grab it. Pause the video and go grab it because we, we may be using that in a little bit. So I want to start out with butterfly pose. Right now, I'm seated on a bolster. So if, you're, if you have a lot of tightness in the hips, you might want to try sitting on a cushion of some sort. But for butterfly pose, we bring the soles of the feet together and you can kind of um, bring some movement into the pose if you'd like. Maybe try reaching the thumbs to the arches of the feet. If your knees are up here and your hips are sort of tight, you can bring the elbows into the knees to help encourage the hips to open. And if you feel like you're not getting a deep enough stretch, um, you can not use the bolster, I guess. <laughs> so you might get a little bit of a deeper stretch like this. Another way to, to get a deeper stretch here is to fold forward. So we're gonna be doing a lot of hip openers to get the second chakra flowing. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is frog pose. So you might wanna just sort of warm up the hips a little bit before we get into that. Okay, and this is where you might wanna bring this folded blanket. I folded mine kind of like this. Um, if you have two blankets, you can fold each blanket sort of like this and have one blanket underneath each knee. I know back in the studio days, a lot of my students uh, liked doing that because um, it gave them a little bit extra cushion on the knees and helped them to be able to move into the pose more easily. So that's another option. Okay, so we're gonna come onto the hands and the knees with the knees on top of the blanket. And then we'll bring the elbows down to the mat so that the elbows are directly underneath the shoulders. And we're gonna clasp the hands except for the pointer fingers and the thumbs. So like this, okay? really engaging the shoulders, pressing down through the forearms, all the way from the elbow to the wrist, engaging the shoulders. And then we'll start to walk the knees out as wide as you can. And then we flex the feet. So you have the knees bent at 90 degrees, we're flexing the feet. And the thighs are coming out of the hips at sort of a 90 degree angle as well. So it kind of looks like frog legs. Inhaling, visualizing that orange sphere of light in the spine, about four fingers below your navel. And 
and then we'll start to walk the knees back in towards the center and bring it into child's pose for a couple of breaths. Okay, let's inhale, we'll bring it back into our tabletop, and then let's take this left knee, we're going to lift it up off the mat and drag the, I said left knee, <laughs> let's, let's do it with the right foot first, we'll bring the right foot between the hands, okay, and then maybe scoot the left knee back a little bit, we want to get a nice angle in that left hip flexor area. Now, if you're feeling any pain in this right ankle, um, you might want to make sure that the knee's not coming out too far in front of the ankle. For some people, I mean, it may be comfortable for you like that, and that's fine, but if it's not, you can scooch the toes up a little bit more. Okay, and then try to inhale coming up, lifting up the torso and bringing the hands to the hips. Or maybe bringing the hands to the heart and taking the gaze towards the ceiling. And inhaling, bringing it back to center, bringing the hands down to the mat. Let's take that right knee and place it back down on the blanket, coming back to our tabletop. Then we're going to lift the left knee up off the mat, bringing the left foot in between the hands. Maybe scoot that right knee back a little bit, getting a little angle in this hip flexor. See if you can bring the torso up and lifted. We don't want to dump all of our energy and onto that left thigh. We want to feel really energized here. Maybe bringing the hands to the chest. Maybe taking the gaze towards the ceiling for a little back bend. And inhaling, coming back up to center. Exhaling, bringing the hands down. And we'll bring that left knee back. Okay. So from here, let's curl on the toes. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, coming back into downward facing dog. On the next inhale, we're going to lift the right leg straight up behind. Exhale, crunch that knee in towards the chest and we'll bring the shin down so that it's maybe parallel with the front edge of the mat. It might be in at a little bit of an angle. If you're feeling a lot of tightness, you can also tuck the shin in so that the calf is directly underneath the thigh. Okay, and we want to make sure that the hips are even. So if you're feeling any unevenness in the hips, you might modify, or if you have a block, you can bring it in underneath the lifted um, hip. Okay, so let's take a glance back towards the extended leg. We want to make sure that the ankle is pointing straight up towards the ceiling. Inhale, sending healing breath into any tight areas. If you'd like on the exhale, you can bring the forearms down to the mat. On the next exhale, you might bring the forehead down, bringing the elbows away from the ears. And again, bringing your awareness to that place Four fingers below the navel, visualizing that orange sphere of light, glowing brighter with every breath. If 
Now, if this is hard on your knees, you don't have to do pigeon. You can fast forward through it. Now I tell you, <laughs> but I hope that you know that. <laughs> There's also a good modification of this by doing the four stretch, laying on your back. So that's an, a good alternative. So we're gonna exhale and curl the toes um, on the left foot and then pressing through the hands, we're gonna carefully lift the hips and we'll step the right foot back to meet the left. Coming into our downward dog. Inhale, lifting the hips, exhale, pushing the hips back. Then we'll inhale, lifting the left leg straight up behind, exhale, bringing that knee in towards the chest, bringing the shin to the mat, modifying as needed. One side might be different than the other. That's actually really common um, for the hips to be uneven. So if, if that's happening, don't worry about it. Just modify and give your body whatever it needs on each side. Checking the back heel, making sure it's lifting up towards the ceiling. Nice inhale, breathing into any tight areas. Another good inhale on the exhale, maybe bringing the forearms down to the mat. Maybe bringing the forehead down to the mat, bringing the elbows away from the ears. Inhaling, visualizing that orange sphere of light in the sacral chakra. We'll inhale, bring up onto the hands. On the exhale, we'll curl in the toes on that right foot, pressing through the hands, engaging the shoulders, engaging the core. We'll carefully lift the hips and step the left foot back to meet the right in plank. Inhale, lean forward, exhale, chaturanga. Pull it through into cobra. And then let's bring it into child's pose. Come up to seated. Move the blanket to the side. And scoot up. And we'll gently roll down. Very slowly, using the core. Nice, slow with control. All right, just to show you what pigeon looks like if you do the modified version on your back. It, you bring the legs into the four shape. So you bring the right ankle on top of the left thigh, just above the knee, and you can um, reach your hands through, reach your right hand through the hole in the four, and reach your left hand around behind to clasp the thigh, drawing the legs in towards the chest. So that's just another modification you can do. Okay. So um, from here, I'd like to do happy baby pose before we come into our final relaxation. So for happy baby pose, if you have a lot of tightness in the hips, you can bring the hands to the knees. Um, if you may be able to grab the peace fingers around the big toes or bring the hands to the outer edges of the feet, pointing the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling and bending the knees as much as you can comfortably or maybe feeling a little bit of a stretch, but you just, you don't wanna feel any pain here. Bending the knees, opening up the hips. You can also kind of bring this from side to side. We'll go ahead and stretch the legs out, coming into Shavasana. Take a nice 
nice inhale and the exhale, bringing it onto one side of the body. And then taking your top hand, pressing it into the floor in front of you, gently, carefully, slowly coming back into a comfortable seated position. bringing the arms up overhead, exhaling, bringing the hands to heart center. May you flow with the rhythms of life. Namaste. Thank you.